I'm back in the workshop finishing up some of the smaller neglected details on the XJ. I've got a couple of fabrication projects I want to do and the first one is to build a bracket to align and secure the snorkel. I've put this job off for almost two years simply because I couldn't bring myself to drill into the visible sheet metal and ruin the paint. So my plan is to make a wrap around bracket that clears the A pillar and bolts behind the pillar leaving the paint unscathed and the job reversible if ever I were to remove the snorkel. Excuse me, I'm uh, I'm not feeling 100% as you can probably hear. Uh, things got a bit crazy last night. <clears throat> I mean, it was uh, mine and Samantha's uh, anniversary, so I opened the box um, this time actually last week. So it's held up pretty well. Um, normally, normally they don't last longer than than a week. So we'll see how it goes. But anyway. Um, been meaning to make one of these for about a year and a half and I never really wanted to make one that just sort of screwed into the side of the sheet metal. So I've kind of built a wrap around thing, a little bit like those light pods that you see I've got there just in front of the mirrors. But those light pod ones aren't actually that great because they, they hug the pillar. So you get this slight vibration and it takes the paint away. So I've actually had to pack rubber, thin rubber underneath those, which solved the problem. But with this one, I've just made it so there's a gap so the soapy water can wash the dirt away and it never makes contact with the pillar. Um, but anyway, paint it and mount it. <laughs> well, I put a bit of sealant there and this is all painted. Let's see how it goes. You can actually see the holes, which is awesome. Good. It's all good. No touching. That is quite a distance actually to uh, to try. And... There we go. Oh. Woo. Try and get the other one. That's it. Oh, that is rigid ass. Love it. It's always these very simple little projects that I find can sometimes be the trickiest, especially when you're trying to not scratch this nice A pillar here and kind of ruin it. So I've maintained a bit of a gap between the snorkel and the pillar so that no dust and small vibrations over time can sand away the paint and ruin it. It's also straightened up the snorkel. So before it was off to one side, now it's dead straight with the vehicle. It looks way better. There's a tiny, tiny amount of movement, movement but just the smallest amount. So it looks really good. And, and that gap between the bracket itself and the pillar means again, dirt can be washed out very easily. We'll see how it lasts, but that is a big improvement. That may have looked like a small job, but it was surprisingly time consuming. But now I've got a more complicated project to conjure up, and it's a fold down step for the rear ladder. With the approach of summer, it won't just be me using the Jeep, so an assist step to get up to the ladder is going to make it so that you don't have to be able to do the split to make that first step. And like usual, I have no plan for this, so I'm just going to see how it goes with the scrap that I've got in the workshop. So this is it, basically. Folding step, pretty simple. Um, and, and everything I just planned isn't actually gonna work because 
there's so much going on here with the tire carrier you know it has to open and then the question is is you want this to be optional you don't really want to have to open it every time you open the tire carrier just to get to the back of the vehicle you, you want it as an optional thing so it needs to be somewhere that um you know isn't going to interfere with all of this stuff here maybe the maybe it can hang there put your foot on it like that and then up you go and then it closes up and does that Well, fast track forward a bit, this is what I've come up with. Um, this is the bracket uh, with a stop at the back, obviously, because when the weight's on it, it's going to be pushed up against this back plate. Hopefully that'll be strong enough. And that thing just kind of drops down like that. So the, the, the force that your foot puts on it kind of locks everything in place. There's no like clicky things or any buttons or anything like that. And the reason being is just because in the winter, um, all that stuff just becomes unusable like any small latches and pins and spring operated shit it just gets gummed up like uh, well you know you know what we're talking about basically so I've kind of made it just as simple as I can and as robust as I can To be honest, at first I wasn't really liking this build, but now that I've gotten into it, I feel like it's starting to come together and actually look alright while being very functional. I've got some finalising to do though, so I'm going to add some walling into it to stop it bending, and then I think it should be almost there. Excuse the mask, the dust is a pain. Well, I've drilled some holes in the back of that, I had to wall it off. There's a lot of flexibility in it before, and I've actually shortened it a little bit because it was a little bit low. So I'm going to put this together now and uh, see what this is like. And I found a little mechanism in the garage. I know I said earlier I, was gonna, I wasn't going to use this kind of stuff, but I kind of really don't know what else to do. Um, so I'm going to try and build that into it. So that looks pretty good. The idea is, is this should open on its own. So it's going to be up like that. You pull a pin, it drops down and does that. It's the ultimate in lazy technology. Oh, that's the car. Anti-vibration system. Normally when there's vibrations, I've authorised them. Something like that. Well, that's the step all finished. I've just cleaned up the welds and got it ready for paint. Just need to brake clean it. I would like to Raptor line it like the rest of the bumper and tire carrier, but the problem is I don't have any Raptor liner and this would use way less than a litre of paint. So um, I'm going to wait till I've got some other projects on and paint it with Raptor at a later stage. I'm just going to rattle can it for the time being. But this is a bit stiff. You can get this out if you pull it, but it is just a bit on the stiff side. So what I'm going to do really when I operate this is I'll just lift it a bit and then let it drop down and, and I've changed the design a bit. So before when it used to drop down it would open automatically like that. It doesn't do that anymore so what I've added to it is this foot here which has changed the weight of it a bit. So when it drops down it does that. I'm trying to show you. It stays like that and then you push that with your, with your foot and then it opens and the reason being is that when I want to close it again, um, I can just put my foot up like that, it will stay there. 
and it will close like that and I don't have to bend down. So it just makes my life a bit easier. The only thing that's annoying is this is a bit stiff. Maybe it'll loosen up over time, um, but it does work pretty good. I mean, now you can basically walk up this and come back down. It can take quite a lot of abuse. The only thing that I would say is that obviously I've lowered the departure angle of the vehicle by adding all this crap here and it's subjectable or susceptible even to leverage. So, I mean, it's pretty tough. I've, I've been yanking at it, the step, for a while. And, um, you know, it, it doesn't appear to be too weak or anything. Like, the bracket is extremely strong. So, you know, hopefully it'll be okay. But you never know. When you get off the rocks and you drop down, the vehicle slams something, it's going to... It's going to take some shit, isn't it, to be fair, and probably get damaged. So, you know, I'll see how it does. I guess at least it can be removed. So another job I've been putting off forever is changing the chain in the transfer case. And someone said, jack the vehicle up, um, put it in four-wheel drive. And if you have more than a quarter inch of play on the drive shaft, then um, your chain is stretched. Which, I mean, I think it pretty much is, isn't it? Look. Definitely not the gear engagement, that is absolutely tight as. So, I guess the thing to do now would be to take it for a drive and see whether it still makes the noise, but those spicy U joints aren't that old. Absolutely zero noise from the transfer case. So that's shit. Why is it doing that then? Well, I just took the Jeep out for a spin and put it in four wheel drive without the drive shaft in. No noise whatsoever. It's as quiet as a mouse. So you might think it's gotta be the drive shaft. Well, I'm convinced it isn't. I actually think it's the bearings and the chain. I actually just think the MP231 needs rebuilding. There's a tiny, tiny amount of play there on that front yoke. There really shouldn't be. It's very slight, but I would assume there should really be none at all. Um, but anyway, I'll show you why I don't think it's the drive shaft. Normally it's the double cardan portion that gives the problem. Um, but again, these U-joints aren't that old. Um, everything's really nice. There's absolutely no movement in this at all. There's a tiny, tiny amount here. Just the slightest amount, absolutely nothing though. But I don't think that's enough to cause the horrific growling sound that I'm getting under acceleration. The growl I'm getting from the MP231 is extremely loud under load, a little bit quieter under deacceleration. So I think it's bearings and chain, and I think that's the problem. I've had an issue with the T31 for a little while now. I've tried to kind of fix it using some stuff I had here in a spare T case, but really I should have just bought a master rebuild kit and done the job when it was out of the vehicle. So I won't make that mistake again. I'll order that stuff and that's when I'll take it off the vehicle to fully rebuild it so it can stay in there for now. So viewer discretion, this is the part of the video where I'm probably going to do a lot of talking, but that step is kind of all done. I primed it and rattle canned it with matte black paint, but um, $50 equivalent for a one litre of Raptor liner. It's very expensive here in Sweden. I will get a litre, but um, I plan on using the vehicle in a couple of days. For a camp i'm going to do with a mate of mine that's been a long time coming so it'd be nice to have the older 40 plus step given i'm almost there installed in the meantime but this video really is just me wrapping stuff up on the diesel um i was going to rebuild the draw system um given that's a prototype and i kind of know how i want that now and i had some other little things i needed to do like the mp2 through one and everything but i just don't have the parts nor the time nor the drive right now to do it so I've wrapped up work on the diesel. It's ready to go out for the summer and the spring and everything or whatever. And the next videos to come in between the Overland stuff, if I'm in the workshop, it's going to be the four litre out there because that thing's sat patiently all winter covered in snow. And now things are thawing out. I'm going to drag it out of the snow with this thing and uh, get it in here because I've got some corrosion work to do on it. And my plan is to get all the cutting and the welding and the paintwork internally done, clean up the interior, get it back in, and then do the outside. And then kind of end up with a nice shell of a vehicle to work with that has all the rust treated, all the rust treatment done underneath, like the dinner troll and stuff you see me do. And from there on, once you've got a decent shell, 
you're basically in the right ballpark really to start taking a vehicle in any direction you want it to. Now with that four litre, it's too nice to turn into like a Frankenstein Jeep like mine. This Jeep here is the adventure thing and the experimental thing that I play around with, but um, that thing there, I'm probably just gonna do a very modest lift, like two inches or something, and then 31s, and just make it into kind of like, you know, a nice SUV and really keep it simple. It's not gonna be a roof tent on it, nothing like that. And if I take it out on a camp, which I really want to do, um, then I'll just be in a sleeping bag inside the vehicle and just get, kind of make it into like a back to basic setup on a budget. That's what I'm keen to do really, um, you know, with that vehicle. Uh, just just make it, keep it simple. Cause you know, I've kind of pushed it out of the water with this over the years, cause I've had this vehicle for 10 years. And these things progress as they do, but you know, it's nice sometimes to just kind of keep it simple. But this video may come across a little bit boring, but uh, you know, like like a lot, that pr pretty much like all the videos on my channel, it's just me doing stuff I'm already doing. So if those of you out there are watching who weren't entertained by this, it probably just wasn't entertaining. <laughs> um, you know, building that step and doing the, the bracket and inspecting the vehicle, the two through MP231, just stuff I'm doing anyway. And you know, you just have to remember this isn't like a full on budget channel where I've got like an editor and a drone pilot and all this kind of stuff and a real high budget. It's just one bloke in a shitty garage with a couple of Cherokees, a grinder and a budget welder. And that's kind of like a lot of what most people have. So, um, you know, it's just the realities of real life really. But that really brings me to the end of the video that I was gonna go into a bit of dialogue at the end here about some stuff I'm gonna do with the diesel. I, I might, I'm toying around with, with some pros and cons of, of having the roof tent removable and sleeping inside the vehicle when I'm winter camping. Because in the summer it doesn't work. I've tried it. I've experimented with ground tents, I've been in hammocks, I've been in the ARB awning room, I've changed tents a few times and, and experimented with lots of stuff. And the roof tent is something I come back to because of the footprint of the vehicle, because of the insects and just the, the convenience of setting up and being on the ground, uh, up in the tent, sorry, on the roof and in it containing all the bedding. Um, it just makes a lot of sense really as sort of a vehicle that's a jack of all trades and a master of none. Not quite a solo vehicle, not quite a family vehicle. It does both. It's a shit build really in a way because like when you try and build a vehicle like that, you need a massive vehicle really to sort of cope with that. And a Cher Cherokee is a very small platform to, to build off of. So I've got some, I've got to think about the direction I'm taking it. Um, but the reality is, is like sleeping in the vehicle, which would be ideal really, isn't possible in Sweden. Uh, the mosquitoes and, and the insects is just too, too intense. Um, and, and if you've never experienced it, then, then you just can't imagine it. Because I've tried explaining it to people. I've had people visit Sweden and come out with me multiple times. And I always pre-warn them. I'm like, Svein, Knot, Mug, Brems, plus all the other stuff in the south, like the ticks and all these like weird flies that lay eggs in your hair, you know, and like the weird horse fly thing. I don't know what, it, I can't remember what it's called, but it lays eggs in your scalp. And even washing your hair doesn't get it out. There are tons of different flies and they come in droves. You know, you can't breathe in some in some locations. So when you're sleeping in a vehicle and you have the vehicle open, it just fills up. They just go in because you're creating shade. And why you see me avoid an awning at all costs in the summer, I just bake in the sun because at least the sun means they they get dehydrated and they're, and it's too hot for them. So it's the only time of day where you get peace. So if you come from somewhere that just doesn't have that volume of flies, it just it's just hard to understand. It's why a roof tent's a really cool thing when you've got kids because it's on the roof, it's closed. And when it's up there, they can't get to it and keep opening the doors and letting everything in. But when you've got a ground tent or when you've got the ARB awning room out, they're going in and out all day and they're just letting in the blood suckers. And then when you go to bed, they go, they're go they going for you. You just, you know, you start hearing them and it just becomes a pain in the ass at night. So it's kind of why I've gone back to the roof tent, but I'm playing around with some stuff at the moment um, in terms of the setup. Because this is a very small vehicle and I don't want to keep changing it every 
other year just because my my children are, well my child's growing up and there's another one on the way as well um you know so the family's getting bigger so i need to sort of think about some stuff but um anyway um i'll stop talking thanks for watching just wake you up in case you fell asleep in your cereal and uh i'll see you very soon in another video take care